Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the globe. Our headlines Cyclone Amphan's death toll crosses 100, damage estimated to go up to US dollars 15 billion. Indian trade unions on a nationwide strike against changes in labor laws. Impeachment appeal filed against Jair Bolsonaro of Brazil. Survey by South African unions show that schools are not ready to reopen by June. We begin with an update on the situation in eastern India and Bangladesh after Cyclone Amphan. The number of official casualties has come up to 107, with 83 dead in India, mostly in the state of West Bengal. 20 deaths have been reported in Bangladesh and 4 in Sri Lanka. The number of deaths is expected to rise. The state of West Bengal in India bore the brunt of the cyclone's damage. The state government has estimated that the damage may be upwards of 1 trillion rupees or close to 14.4 billion US dollars. Neighbouring Bangladesh also suffered extensive damage with preliminary estimates indicating that it would go up to 1.5 billion US dollars. The damage to the wetlands of the Sundarban Delta straddling the coastlines of West Bengal and Bangladesh is yet to be assessed. In India, leftist political parties in the state government of West Bengal have called on the central government to treat the cyclone as a national disaster. Opposition groups have also stated that the state needs to be paid its dues in revenue sharing and immediate relief measures and aid must be dispersed by the government. We now go to Brazil where leftist political parties submitted the first impeachment appeal against President Jair Bolsonaro. The impeachment request was submitted to the President of the Chamber of Deputies, the lower house of Brazilian Congress. The request was submitted by United Front of Opposition parties such as the PSOL, Workers' Party and the Communists. The petition was also supported by over 400 civil society organizations from across Brazil. The impeachment against the president is based on 30 charges that range from criminal contempt of the Supreme Court to threatening the lives of Brazilian citizens by deliberately undermining efforts by provincial governors to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The petition was signed by 146 individuals and groups, including former presidents Lula da Silva and Dilma Rousseff of the Workers' Party. Opposition parties also cited Bolsonaro's interference in the actions of the federal police and his support for over 300 far-right radical groups in Brazil. These groups have been accused of violence against oppressed ethnicities and social movements. Bolsonaro's popularity in Brazil witnessed a very sharp decline over the past few months because of his denial of the threat posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. He has acted to prevent state governors and city administrations from taking the necessary measures to contain it. The outbreak in Brazil has expanded rapidly over the span of the month. As of today afternoon, the total number of cases is at 311,000, placing it third behind US and Russia. In our next story, Indian trade unions staged a countrywide protest today against recent changes to labour laws made by state governments. The leaders of 10 trade unions also staged a hunger strike at New Delhi's Rajgat, the resting place of Mahatma Gandhi. At the very outset of the protest, union leaders faced repression. At least three leaders of unions were detained in the city of Noida at the outskirts of Delhi. The trade unionists were reportedly arrested from their homes. The call for the protest was given on May 15th. A joint statement by trade union confederations condemned the government's attempts to use the pandemic as an opportunity to dismantle the rights of the working class. So far, at least nine states have decided to extend the daily working hours in factories from the existing limit of 8 to 12. States, including Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, which are led by the right-wing BJP, sought to bring changes to labour laws. These changes have been deemed draconian, with Uttar Pradesh deciding to exempt companies from as many as 38 labour laws for 1000 days. According to the results of a survey conducted by unions in South Africa, 95% of the classrooms and 92% of staff offices in schools across the country are yet to be sanitised. The surveys were conducted between May 16th and 18th, Five teachers' unions in South Africa have advised their members against entering school premises unless the staff is provided with PPEs and the schools are clean and disinfected. The advice was issued in a joint statement by the unions on May 20th. This was the day after the South African government announced that schools will reopen from June 1st. Teachers and management staff are required to return to work from May 25th. Of the 9,365 schools which responded to the survey from all the nine provinces, 92% of schools said that they did not have enough material for cleaning and disinfecting the premises on a daily basis. The survey further revealed that 78% of schools report that sanitation facilities are not there. Meanwhile, 42% of the schools are dependent on water tanks for running water and 39% have not received a supply from the government. Further, 79% of the schools are yet to receive instructions from authorities about the necessary health and safety regulations to be followed while operating schools during the emergency. 
That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Yeah,